All right, so are you ready to dive in today? Because we are tackling a big one, making sure your training actually gets results, you know, moves the needle, not just like, sits there. It's a common pain point, right? We're sinking time and money into training, but are we actually seeing that translate into real improvement? Exactly. So today we're turning to T&D Systems View by Guy W. Wallace, who's a total pro in performance technology. His book is seriously a treasure trove of practical advice. It's not just theory, it's stuff you can actually use. Love that. So what's the mission for our deep dive today? We're giving you a framework something to really analyze your training system, and who knows, maybe even give it a little tune-up. Ooh, I like the sound of a tune-up. Think of it like spring cleaning, but for your professional development, right? Exactly, and at the heart of it all is this idea, training. It has to be a business investment, not some afterthought. Okay, that just makes sense. I've definitely been in some training sessions that felt, well, less than essential. Oh, tell me about it. I think we've all been there. And that's what Wallace wants to fix. He's all about getting us out of that rut. How does he do that? He introduces this concept called the Get This T&D Systems View, and it's all about making sure training aligns with, well, everything else your organization is doing. Wait, so you're saying it's not enough to just have a bunch of random courses? There needs to be a method to the madness. You hit the nail on the head. He uses this really cool clock face metaphor to break down all the parts of a good training system. Hold on, a clock face? Yeah. Now I have to know more. <laughs> How does that even work? So. Picture a clock, right? Each number, 1 through 12, that's a system, and each one of those is essential for making training effective. Okay, I'm picturing it. So do we go through all 12? We will. But Wallace divides them into three main groups, makes it a little easier to digest. All right, so walk me through it. What's first? What time zone are we in? Let's start at the top, shall we? <laughs> From about 12 to 4 o'clock, we've got our leadership systems. Leadership systems, okay. Sounds important. Oh, it is. This is all the big picture stuff. We're talking governance, strategic planning, budgeting, even how you measure if training is a success. Right, because you can't have good training if the people in charge don't even know what they want, right? A hundred percent. And you know, this is where a lot of organizations stumble. They treat training like it's totally separate from everything else. But Wallace shows us, no, it's all got to be connected. So it's all connected. Got it. What's next on our training clock? What time is it? From about 5 to 7 o'clock, you've got your core systems. Core systems. Is that like the heart of training? Think of it as the engine room. It's where you design programs, develop, or maybe buy materials, and then actually deliver that training to your people. So if leadership is the why, the core is the what, right? Like the actual courses and workshops and all that. You've got it. But here's the thing. This is where a lot of organizations get stuck, too. They pour all their energy into the what without thinking enough about the why or even the how. Okay, now I'm really starting to see how this all fits together, but we're not done with the clock yet, right? What's our last stop? Our final stop takes us from eight to 11 o'clock support systems. And these are like the unsung heroes, making sure training can actually work. Okay, I'm intrigued. Give me some examples. What kind of support are we talking about? Well, you've got your marketing and communication. Gotta uh -huh. get people excited about training, right? Then there's finances, HR, making sure the right people are in the right training, and even research and development. Wait, hold up. Research and development for training? That's not something you hear every day. Tell me more about that. Right, it's kind of unexpected, but it's crucial. Wallace emphasizes that you always have to evaluate what's working, what's not, and how can we make it better? It's not a one and done situation. Wow, this clock face model. It's giving me a whole new way of looking at things. I feel like I, I finally have a map to understand this whole training world. That's exactly what it is a map, but here's the best part. Wallace doesn't just give us the map, he gives us the tools to actually use it. Okay, now I'm really interested. Tools, you yeah. say. What kind of tools are we talking about? Don't leave me hanging. Okay, tools to actually use this training map of ours. I am all ears. Where do we even start? So Wallace gives us this self-assessment in the book. It's super practical, full of questions that help you pinpoint the, like, the warning signs that your training system might need some work. I love a good warning sign, like we're playing detective. Except instead of a missing cookie, we're finding what's missing in our training. Exactly. Okay, hit me with a question. What's one of those warning signs? All right, get ready for this one. Do your training priorities constantly shift, leaving everyone, you know, a little frustrated? Oof. Okay. That one, that one hits a little close to home. It's like we're chasing the latest training trend, always shifting gears. No wonder people are frustrated. 
Yeah. And that right there, that is a classic symptom of a disconnect, right, between those leadership systems we were talking about. Ah, the leadership systems. Up there at 12 o'clock. Right. If what you're training doesn't actually match your business goals, your strategy, well, you're kind of spinning your wheels, aren't you? Yeah. And probably wasting a ton of time and money while doing it. Okay. Give me another one. What's another red flag we should be looking out for? Let's talk about measurement. Wallace asks this. Do you actually truly understand the ROI of your training programs? Okay, see, now that one makes me a little nervous. I'll be honest, we're pretty good at tracking like how many people signed up for a course, how many finished. But when it comes to measuring the actual impact, yeah, yeah. room for improvement, definitely room for improvement. It's so common, though. It's easy to get stuck measuring those surface level things like, did people like the training? Sure. Did they learn something? Maybe. Right, right. Everyone gets a smiley face sticker. Exactly. But did any of that translate into real change on the job? Mm. Did it make a difference? That's the million dollar question. It's so true. It's like we want that instant gratification, those happy sheets at the end of the session. Mm -hmm. But deep down, we know we need to dig deeper. Exactly. And that's what Wallace wants us to do. He wants us to move beyond those vanity metrics right? Mm. and ask ourselves, did people actually use what they learned? And did it impact, you know, did it impact the bottom line? I mean, that sounds amazing in theory. Sure. But how do you actually measure that? It feels kind of impossible. I hear you. It can feel overwhelming, but it's essential if you really want to show the value of what you're doing, the value of training. One thing Rollis talks about is focusing on a few key metrics Okay. and make sure they're related to your business goals. Don't try to measure every single thing. So be strategic about it. Don't just drown in data, but actually find the data points that tell a story. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. I like it. What else can this self-assessment help us, you know, oh, uncover? Oh, remember those support systems on our clock face, 8 to 11 o'clock. I do, I do. They're becoming more familiar now. This next question, it's all about that. Wallace asks, are you actually capturing lessons learned, you know, to avoid repeating the same mistakes over and over? Oh, my gosh. That is... Ouch. It's like we're stuck in a loop. Instead of learning from our experiences, we just keep reinventing the wheel every single time. But think about it. If you could capture those lessons learned, if you could share them, imagine how much more efficient your training could be. Okay, yeah. Less time, less money wasted. What's the secret? How do we stop making the same mistakes? Wallace is a big, big fan of having a formal process for capturing those lessons. It doesn't have to be this big, complicated thing. Even just a quick debriefing meeting after a training, that can do wonders. Oh, I like that. Keep it simple. Or, you know, you could set up a shared document database, something like that, where people can share best practices, challenges, things like that. Work smarter, not harder, <sighs> right? I love it. This deep dive has been so eye-opening, but I have to say, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. It's a lot to take in for sure. But remember, you don't have to do everything at once. What are your biggest pain points right now? Focus on those. Where can you make a change and see the biggest impact? You're right. You're right. Prioritize. Focus on getting the biggest bang for our buck, as they say. <laughs> this T&D systems view really does feel like a roadmap, <laughs> but... Like, how do we actually use it? Well, that's what we're here for. We can help you take these concepts, apply them to your organization, your situation. Oh, okay. So like tailoring it to our specific needs. Exactly. But I do have one final thought I want to leave you with. Oh, a final thought. Do tell. So Wallace, he talks a lot about performance-based needs. And what he means by that is don't just train for the sake of training. You need to figure out what skills, what behaviors are actually going to lead to better performance and then design your training around that. Okay, that makes sense. We keep coming back to this idea of tying training to, you know, real world results. But how does that performance based thinking apply to, yeah. well, everything else? It feels bigger than just designing programs, you know? It is bigger, isn't it? I mean, what if we use that same approach, that same lens for other decisions? Like, what about when we're deciding which new technologies to invest in? Whoa. Or even just like trying out new ways of working. I never thought of it that way before. Yeah. That's, that's actually huge. Instead of getting caught up in the hype of the latest and greatest thing, what if we stopped and asked ourselves, will this actually help us achieve our goals? You know, Olay. will it actually improve performance? And how will we measure that? It's about being intentional with every decision, every tool we use, every process we put in place. Exactly. And that, I think, is the real power of what Wallace is talking about, of the T&D systems view. It's not just about training. It's about being smarter about how we all work and learn. 
I think for me, the big takeaway is we get so caught up in the doing, right? Checking those boxes yeah. that we forget to ask, are we even doing the right things? Are we using the right tools to do them? This whole performance-based thing, it's huge. It really makes you stop and think. We love the shiny new tech, the new trends, but it always comes back to, are we seeing those results? It's been a total light bulb moment for me, this whole conversation. I feel like I have like a whole new playbook for training and development, but honestly, it's bigger than that, isn't it? It really is. It's like a blueprint for making better decisions, period. Exactly. And that's what's so great about Wallace's work. You yeah. know, he gives you these amazing tools, practical stuff, but then he also pushes you to think bigger. Connect the dots between training and, well, everything else your organization does. This deep dive has given me so much to think about, but I also feel like I have a direction now, you know? I yeah. know what I need to do. And that's what we're here for. And listen, we've only just scratched the surface of what Wallace covers in his book, in T&D Systems View. So if you're ready to really dig in, you know, roll up your sleeves and make some changes, I highly recommend checking it out. Oh, it's going straight to the top of my reading list. And for our listeners, we'd love to hear from you. What really resonated with you today? What questions are still bouncing around in your head? This is a conversation that keeps going, right? Our world is changing so fast. So we have to keep learning, keep evolving how we approach training and development. You got it. A huge thank you to our expert for breaking down this topic. It's been amazing. It's been a pleasure. I love talking about training that actually makes a difference. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the T&D systems view. Remember, folks, training. It shouldn't just check a box. It should move the needle. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing for performance that matters. Mm -hmm.